Hello again and welcome back to our course on Visio 2016. In this section we're going to look at holding shape data externally from a Visio 2016 drawing. We'll look first at the general principles of using external data. Then I'll demonstrate custom import. We'll look at the role of the unique identifier and then I'll show you how to link and unlink shapes and their shape data. And finally, we'll talk about the external data window. One of the first things that I need to point out is that this full set of facilities to deal with external data is only available in Visio Professional, not in the standard edition. And also, what I'm going to show you here really comprises two different facilities. We have what's called the custom import facility that we're going to look at first. And then we have a new feature in Visio 2016, which is the quick import facility, which to some extent is an extension of custom import. What it really is, is to give you some additional functionality on top of custom import. But specifically, this relates to Microsoft Excel. And in fact, the data storage mechanism that I'm going to use in this section is Microsoft Excel. If you don't know Excel, you don't use it, you don't have a copy of Excel, don't worry too much about that because I'm going to explain this in fairly general terms without going into any of the intricacies of using Excel. And hopefully you'll get the general idea even if you're not very familiar with Excel. So first of all, let's take a look at the custom import facility. Suppose that I'm dealing with a drawing, say like this network drawing, and the data, the shape data for the drawing is being held elsewhere. Now if I go to the data tab, in the external data group on the left, there is a custom import button. And if I click on custom import, I start this data selector wizard and this lists the options for where the data can be stored. Top of the list, Microsoft Excel Workbook. But then look at the other options that include Microsoft Access Database, Microsoft SQL Server Database, etc. Now, as I say, we're going to use Microsoft Excel Workbook. Uh, let me just show you the workbook that I've prepared. So the workbook has a single worksheet, Network Data. Bear in mind when we're doing this that, for instance, if you are using an Excel workbook as your external data storage mechanism, you may have data for many drawings in one workbook. So you may have one sheet holding data for one drawing, another sheet holding data for another drawing, and so on. And in fact, you can mix and match these in any way. So for instance, I could have the shape data for a drawing in many different sources. So I may have some of the fields in an Excel workbook, some of the fields in a SQL Server database, and so on. And as you'll see in just a moment, we may not, for example, use all of the columns on this particular sheet in a drawing. We may just use two or three of the columns, or indeed, not all of the rows either. But what I have here is a worksheet with nine rows. The top row contains the headings, component name, location, etc. And the other eight rows contain the information about each of the eight individual shapes. And this data should pretty much agree with what we saw earlier on in the course, except in effect, we're starting again with setting up the data for this drawing. So that's the workbook. There's a copy of it in the course files folder. So Microsoft Excel workbook is the option we're going for. Click on Next. Now I need to browse to that workbook. There it is, click on Open, and then Next. Now what Visio does is to look at the workbook and identify potential sources of data. It's identified that single worksheet network data. If there were more than one worksheet, I'd have to choose the one that I wanted to use. And you see that button underneath the worksheet name there, Select Custom Range. It may be that if I've got more data on that sheet than I need, I might select a range on the sheet to take the data from. Below that, there is a checkbox. First row of data contains column headings. 
In my case, the first row of data does contain the column heading, so I'm going to make sure that's checked. Click on Next. Now Visio does its bit of analysis. It looks at the sheet or range that I've specified and tries to work out what the columns are, what the fields are. And in fact, by default, it says, do you want to include all of the columns and do you want to include all of the rows? So do you want everything on that sheet? If I don't want all of the columns, there's a Select Columns button there. I do want all of those seven fields included, but I might uncheck any of them I don't want. And then I can also select here which rows I want to include. Which of these components do I want to include? Well, I'm going to use all of them on this occasion. So, all and all, click on Next. Now we come to a very, very important point. When you are linking the shapes in a drawing to external data, normally it's best to establish that linkage using some kind of unique identifier. And very often, particularly in a commercial environment, this would be something like an asset number, something that's completely unique to the item that you are recording. Now in this case, what Visio has done is to look at the columns of data and look for one column that seems to contain unique information and it's come up with component name. Now the component names in my case are the names that are shown on the drawing. Office PC, server, root, and so on. They're not particularly good as unique names. I'd probably be much better off with asset numbers. On this occasion, I am going to use those names as my unique identifiers. But it would mean that if I got a second Office PC, I couldn't call it Office PC as well. I'd have to call it Office PC 2 or something like that. And generally speaking, it's best to use a unique identifier which doesn't actually represent any physical characteristic of the item you're identifying. So something like an asset number is usually a pretty good thing to use. On this occasion, though, as I say, I'm going to stick with those names. I just need to make sure that if I add any devices to the network, they get new component names, which are not duplicates of any existing ones. Next. And it's finished. Now, once it's finished, it gives me a table on the right with the external data that goes with my drawing. And what I'm going to do now, as the little call out there says, Drag rows onto the page to link data to existing shapes or to add new linked shapes. I'll show you what that last part means in just a moment. If I look at kids' tablets in the drawing and look at the shape data, it's just kids' tablets. That's all the shape data there for, to, for the moment. Now let me go to the kids' tablets entry in that table. This is the data imported from Excel. And let me drag it onto the kids' tablets shape in the drawing. Look at the shape data, and there we are. It's got all of the data from the Excel workbook. And if I did the same for the printer, select the printer, there's the data for the printer. So that's basically how it works. Now at this point you're probably a little bit concerned that with a very large drawing you'd have to manually link the data to the shape on a one by one basis. It could take a long time. In fact you can largely automate this process but just before I show you how to do that let's look at what we have so far. For the two shapes where I have linked the data I've now got a little link symbol there. And in fact that indicates that I've successfully identified the link between one shape and one set of data. If I want to unlink those, so for instance if I wanted to delete the shape or even if I've made a mistake, then if I right click one of the options there is unlink. And if you look at the option below that, linked shapes, tablet device, etc. here, particularly in a large diagram or a multi-page diagram, using this option means that finding an entry in that table and clicking on this option takes you straight to that shape. So that can be pretty useful as well. And by the way, we're looking at all of this external data at the moment. Will that always be there? 
No, it's actually a window that contains the table of data, the external data window. And if you look at the data tab on the ribbon in the show hide group, you can see the external data window is checked. If I uncheck that, I'll hide that window. So even though you may have a large body of linked data, you don't always have to see it. You can actually hide it as well if you would need to. Now in terms of automating this linkage process, to the right of the option we've just used in the advanced data linking group on the data tab, there is a link data button. It brings up the automatic link wizard and we have an option. I want to automatically link to selected shapes or all shapes on this page. Let's try all shapes on this page. Click on next. Now what Visio is saying is how do we link things? Which data column? Well, it's component name. And we've actually worked on the principle that this will be the same as the component name in the shape. But this is your chance to say that those two fields are actually named differently. Let's see what we've got in the shape fields. Nope, there's the one we want, component name. That's the one to match. Note, replace existing links. If there are already links there, replace them on the basis of the rule that we've just given Visio. So basically what we're saying to Visio here is I want you to match component name in the external data window with component name in the drawing and hopefully I've set all of those correctly and update the shape data for each shape based on that linkage. Click on next. There's a summary of what we've told Visio to do. Click on finish. And it seems to have successfully linked all of them. So hopefully that's good news. Now there are still a couple of other things we need to cover in this. For instance, you see this thing here that's appeared on the right. Purchase price with the price. What's, the, what's that all about? And also, given that we're maintaining this data in an Excel workbook, how do we do an update? Do we have to go through all this process again? And they're just a couple of the topics I'm going to cover in the next section. So... I'll see you then. Hey everyone, Nigel here. Thanks for watching. If you're not a Simon Says It subscriber, go ahead and click right down here so you don't miss any videos. Click over here to check out our complete training course at simonsaysit.com. And click down right there to see the complete list of videos in this playlist. We'll see you next week with additional videos.